Amen. We'll be preaching today from Psalm 31, uh, verses 1 through 5 and 14 through 17. And the word of the Lord reads as follows. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Verse 14. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. The word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Amen. I want to share a brief word with you today entitled, My Times Are in Your Hands. My times are in your hands. On Tuesday, Vanessa and I, like thousands of other parents in Montgomery County, took our children trick-or-treating. As parents, our first trick-or-treating outings began in the early 2000s with our daughters, who have all, unlike their younger siblings, outgrown the affair. What this means in terms of time is that Vanessa and I have been going on trick-or-treating excursions for over two decades now. I offer this fact not as a veiled complaint, but as a veritable celebration because I love trick-or-treating with the Wilson family. I don't know if my vocation as a pastor allows for this fascination and I'm refusing to do any investigation on the matter. Last Sunday, I shared with you my fondness for the autumn season and trick-or-treating somehow blends all of the passions for the season, the vibrant colored costumes, the culinary delights, the festive autumn aura, and family. What I've learned to do over several seasons of trick-or-treating is to focus on the quality time spent with family, to savor the moment, to take in the joy of the occasion while it lasts. Because you know, as well as I know, that time has a way of moving on. The grace for Vanessa and I is that we still have a few seasons left. Even so, time keeps on slipping into the future. This is all the more reason that you and I should treasure the moments we have. Time, I believe, is one of the greatest of God's gifts to us. As the first act of creation, God separated the light from the darkness making day and night, morning and evening, essentially creating time as we know it. Human beings were the last of God's creation, yet God gives to us as a gift what he made first, that is time. Psalm 90 and 10 says, our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Time then, however much of it we have, is God's gift to us. And according to John 3.16, is included in the gift of salvation. The apostle wrote, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So more than the gift of time, God promises eternity to those who believe in his son, Jesus, whom God sent to rescue us from the penalty of death. I'm shouting right now in my spirit because God has given us both time and eternity. But how we use the gift of time is of utmost importance. Indeed, our use of time has eternal ramifications. Thankfully, the scriptures instruct us on redeeming the time. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17 says, 
Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Listen to me very carefully. We are redeeming the time when we seek God's will in the present moment. We are redeeming the time when we make the most of every opportunity that comes our way. We are redeeming the time when we pursue what, what is of eternal value. And in our pursuit of things eternal, we will discover that a lot of stuff is not worth our time. We redeem the time when we do as much good as we can in the time we have available. Beyond Ephesians chapter 5, the psalmist, I believe, gives us the best advice on what to do with time when he writes in Psalm 31 and 15, my times are in your hands. I believe that this is one of the greatest statements of faith in the whole Bible. Lord, my times are in your hands. But in order to come to terms with the power of David's words in Psalm 31, we have to understand what God's hands symbolize. On one level, God's hands symbolize a power that transcends all other powers. Consider Isaiah chapter 48, verse 13, wherein God says, My hand laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand forth together. To be in the hands of God who loves us and whose powerful hands laid the foundation of the earth and spread out the heavens is a good place to be. The reason that is good, a good place to be is because there will be times and seasons in this life when we feel powerless. Yes, there will be times and seasons when it feels as if the weight of the world is bearing down on us. Times when it feels like our enemies have more strength than we have. And in such seasons, I'm a living witness, it's good to be in the hands of an all-powerful God who can move mountains and raise valleys, who can change times and seasons and deliver us from the hands of our enemies. Beyond the symbol of God's power, God's hands represent the permanence of God's plans. Isaiah 49 and 16 speaks to God's hands and the permanence of God's plans. Hear the Lord's words in that passage. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. The Hebrew word, word harkak, translates as engraved in this passage. The word means to cut in or to inscribe. What I believe the prophet is saying here is that when we serve the Lord, Isaiah 49 is one of four servant songs that describe the service, suffering, and exaltation of the servant of the Lord. Our destiny is engraved on the palms of God's hands. If you are a servant of the living God, your destiny is engraved on the palms of God's hands. I'm shouting again in my spirit because I know that difficult seasons will come and threaten to undermine my hope and my future. I have and will experience seasons that challenge my identity as a servant of God and jeopardize my future. But when seasons come to derail my destiny, I can meditate on Isaiah 49 and 16 and celebrate the fact that my destiny is secure because I have been engraved on the palms of God's hands and my well-being is ever before him. But that's not all. The Hebrew word for engraved in Isaiah 49, 16 also means to decree. The suggestion is that your destiny is bound up with what God has decreed over your life. My God, I know that it's become popular for people to declare and decree things, this thing or that thing. But my interest is in what God has decreed. Why? Because God's decrees are good in every season. God's counsels are immutable. His words are irrevocable. Listen, there are no tricks in God's decrees. But there are wondrous treats to enjoy throughout time and eternity. So whenever you're feeling despondent because of the difficulties of a given season, remember that you are engraved on the palms of God's hands. 
And while you remember that fact, rehearse the divine decrees that have been pronounced over your life as a servant of God. I wish I had time for a thorough review of God's decrees, but, but take these ones home with you on today from Isaiah 41 and 10. God's decree is this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. From Isaiah 40 and 31, God's decree is, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And from Isaiah 43 and 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. From Isaiah 54 and 10, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. From Philippians 4, 4 6 and 7, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. From Psalm 37 and 4, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. I'm so glad about God's decrees on this morning. And in John chapter 14 and 14, our Lord and Savior decreed this. He said, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Are you glad for God's decrees on today? Amen. See, the thing, about, the thing about what God has decreed is that his decrees, his decrees are, are, are not set to seasons. Are you, are you with me? So, so his decrees are good in the summer. They're good in the spring. They're good in the fall. They're good in the winter. They're, his decrees are good when we're on the, on the mountain. His, his decrees are good in our life when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God's decrees, listen to me, God's decrees are good in every season of life. And I, I, when I was preparing this sermon, I just started going through some of my favorite passages. And I began to realize what God has already decreed over my life. Are you with me, church? And his decrees are good in whatever season I find myself in. And very often it's good for us when we're going through a low season to just open up our Bibles and begin to read what God has already spoken over your life. I guarantee you it will pick you up. Are you with me, church? It will pick you up when you realize that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Are you, are you with me, church? It, it, it'll pick you up when you realize that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Are you with me, church? His decrees, his decrees are, are they're forever. Are you with me, church? Yes, thank you, Lord. His decrees are, are forever. And the thing, the thing about God's word, see, 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 God's word is so powerful that when it is spoken, it can actually change the season. <laughs> it, see, his, his word is different than me and you speaking. When, when God speaks, because according to Daniel, God is the one who changes the times and the seasons. And all God has to do is speak a word, and you're in your worst season of life. All God has to do is speak a word, and you turn around, and you're living your best days. Because God has spoken a word to you. Are you with me, church? Amen. I'm so glad for God, this, God's decrees on today. I was reminded as I was preparing this sermon uh, about my testimony from over 22 years ago. And the testimony is about the power of being in the palms of God's hands. As it happened, I was serving my first church as a senior pastor in my hometown of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And one of the accomplishments at my very first church was to start a Wednesday evening prayer service at which we would offer prayers of intercession on behalf of others. I can remember one of my members coming to the Wednesday evening prayer service. She attended faithfully every Wednesday, asking me to pray for her teenage son who was living through a very troubling season of his life. I could tell by the mother's look in her her eyes that it was a critical situation. And every Wednesday we would intercede for this mother's son. Now, now let's fast forward about five years when I'm serving another church in Westchester, Pennsylvania, over 100 miles away from my first church. I received a phone call from the mother who had brought her son's concerns to the weekly intercession service five years before. And the woman had a request. She asked me to officiate her son's wedding. The son who wasn't supposed to make it through that season of life. 
The mother could have asked anybody to officiate. The ceremony was in the backyard of a palatial home, but she called me over 100 miles away because she had connected the dots. The mother realized that when we are inscribed on the palms of God's hands, nothing can undermine the destiny to which God calls us. I know that this is true because the mother had another request, which was to include uh, uh, the last thing that she wanted me to do after I officiated the service. She wanted me to sing a particular song. After I pronounced her son and his newlywed as husband and wife, the mother wanted me to sing a song about the power of being in the palm of God's hands hands. So after I pronounced the young couple as husband and wife, I broke out into a song accompanied by a guitarist and the words of the song were, and God will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. I'm speaking to the person now who thinks your destiny has been compromised because of the hardships you're enduring in this present season. But I want to remind you that you have been engraved on the palms of God's hands, that your destiny is secure. I want to remind you that the dream that you have of your happiness will be fulfilled because you're in the palms of God's hands, the same hands that made heaven and earth, the same hands that have power to deliver you from every distrust. So there's no devil in hell. There's no season so challenging that can keep you from living into your promise. Do you believe it, church? Amen. Right? And that's where, that's where I want to be, church. I want to be in the palm of God's hands. My gosh. That we are engraved on the palms of God's hands. My, but see, so, see when, we, when we connect the two, I want you to connect the two before you leave. Because it, it's not just any hands. Are you with me, church? You're not just engraved on anybody. I know we're living in a time now of, of tattooing and piercings and all of these other things. I want you to think that, that when you've been put on, on the palms of God's hands, it's permanent, church. It doesn't matter what your season is. You have been engraved on the palms of God's hands. In God's hands, listen to me, if you're in God's hands, I want you to go back to the scriptures that says that his hands laid the foundations of the earth. My God, there's no better place to be. That his hands stretched out the heavens. Are you with me, much? Are you with me, church? So if you're having a bad season, if you're having a negative season, if that's season is just around the corner, you really don't have to worry if you're engraved on the palms of God's hands. I don't know about you, but I've, I've been convinced that putting my times in the hands of God, of a God who issues these types of decrees over my life, is one of the best things that I can do in this lifetime. The other best thing that I discovered to do in this lifetime is to commit my spirit to God. Yeah. My time and my spirit. Are you with me, church? Yeah. If we read Psalm 31 carefully, we will notice that David not only places his times in God's hands, but he also commits his spirit into God's hands. In Psalm 31 and 5, the psalmist wrote, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. Those of you who know your Bibles know that Jesus quoted Psalm 31 and 5, into your hands I commit my spirit from the cross of his crucifixion. Yes, we already knew that Jesus placed his times in God's hands. As early as 12 years of age, Jesus was found teaching and confounding the wisdom of scholars in the temple. 20 years later, Jesus was the teacher in these same courts, and his hearers were still struck with his insight and authority. Elsewhere in the scripture, Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Why? Because the Lord's times were in his father's hands. Are you following the story, church? But at the decisive hour... When our Lord was suspended between heaven and earth as the sacrifice for, our, for the sins of the world, he publicly declared that his spirit was committed into God's hands, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So it's not enough to place only our times in God's hands because God's gifts uh, gifts us with more than time. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says that God has set eternity in the human heart. So for, so for the time and eternity that God has given us, we owe God our times and our spirits. Are you with me, church? Which is to say that we should surrender to the sovereignty of God in every season of life. In good seasons, in difficult seasons, in seasons of celebration, 
in seasons of mourning, in seasons of suffering. We should surrender to the sovereignty of God in every season of life. Are you with me, church? Now, I, I know that you're not these types of saints, but I know that there are many people who just give God time. Are you with me? And if they show up on church for a couple of hours on Sunday, they've done what they need to do for God for that week. God, are you, are you following me? But I believe that God requires a lot more than that. Are you with me? Because if, if we think that we give God two hours and that we're done for the week, we're really not understanding what time is. Are you with me, church? Because my interest is not just in time, because I'm also interested in eternity. Are you with me? And God God made time and eternity, and he's given us the gift of time and eternity. And what we've got to do while in the little bit of time that we have down here, church, we only got a little bit of time to get it right. And God says, in the time that I've given you to get it right, you've got to you've got to go beyond the hours on a clock. Are you with me, church? I woke up this morning at, at, at five at five a.m. and I discovered that I had more time to sleep. Are you with me, church? I started shouting in my bed because I had a little bit more time. But time is more than this. What what clicks on the clock? Are you with me, church? Yeah. Time is more than days on a calendar. Yeah. Time is, is, is more than the passage of time uh, when we're at work and when we go home. God, God has invested more in us than just the, the, the minutes on a clock. God has invested more in us than the, than the sand in an hourglass. God has invested eternity in us. Amen. And what God is saying to us in the time that he has given us is that, is that we've, got to, we've got to think on things eternal. Don't, don't, you're wasting your time if all you're thinking about is your retirement or when you're going to build a house or when you're going to do this or when you're going to, you're wasting your time because listen to me, church, listen, the house that you, that you live in now will not always be your house. Are you with me, church? At some point, the Bible says we fly away. So we've got a moment down here to get it right with God. And God says the best thing that you can do, Sean, with the time that I've given you is put your times in my hands. Put your times in my hands. And when you put your times in, in, in my hand, also surrender your spirit to me. Mm. See, when we surrender our spirit to God, it influences the quality of time. I'm preaching for me today. Oh. Hey, hey, when we surrender our spirits to God, you, you, are you with me, church? Yeah. God can see, God can make an hour seem like three weeks. Are you with me, church? Because it's the quality of time. Because God's spirit is in us. Are you with me, church? And God is saying to somebody today, listen to me, uh, you, you have less time than you think you have. And we've got, to, we've got to spend the time that we have down here focusing on the gifts that God has given us. And the gifts are time and eternity. And I'm not going to make the mistake, listen to me, church. I'm not going to make the mistake uh, that the one thief made on the cross. Do you remember the story? Jesus is, is, is hanging between two, three, two thieves, yes? The Bible says that he would be numbered among the transgressors. Is that what it said? And, and, and sure, as the Bible said it, Jesus was, he was found hanging between two thieves. Are you with me, church? And one of the thieves, he derided him. He made the worst use of his time. I mean, there, I don't know if there's another person in history who wasted time like this one particular thief on the cross. As he is hanging, as he is being judged by the son of the living God. Are you, he's being judged by the one actually who made, according to John 1, who made the heavens and the earth. He was hanging beside the one who could do something about his situation. Although he had been condemned to die in a court, God, the, Jesus could do something about it. He wasted his time. He wasted his time because he ignored him. Are you with me, church? He did not see, he did not see the power in, in, in the son of the living God. So, 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 so instead of supporting him, he says, well, if you are who they say you are, get, get me down and get you down as well. If you are who you say you are, do something about our situation. I want to be like the other thief. Are you with me, church? And, and, and in the sense that I want to make the best use of my time. And now, now, if we go back, let's let's go to the let's go to the story. Let's go to the story because because at this point, at this point, the three the three persons that were condemned, the, the thing that they don't have is time. <laughs> they have very little time. Are you with me, church? Maybe because of the way the way that crucifixion played out, they were dying slowly, dying. And the one thing that they did not have is time. 
And, and, so, and so the other thief makes the best use of his time by, by allowing Christ to enter in. Are you with me, church? He said, he said, no, leave this man alone. We're here because we deserve to be here. This man has done nothing wrong. Are you with me, church? And then he said to him, he said, remember me. Listen to me, church. He said to him, he used his time. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come. And so, so what happens? What happens on the cross? What happens here with this thief? You know what he did? You know what he did? He made the best use of his time. Are you with me? And he committed his spirit to God. So it really didn't matter that he was going to die as a thief on the cross because, because the one who decrees, and when he decrees, it's set, church. The one who decrees, he, he pronounced a decree over his life. And he decreed, he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Because he made, he, he, he made the best use of the few fleeting Horrible, nightmarish moments on the cross. He made the best use of his time. The best use of his time. Lord, he, he defended Christ. And then he, then he invited him into his life. And Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Do you see how time works, church? We, we, don't, we don't have much. My God, we, 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 we don't have much. And God is saying, the time that I've given you is a gift. My God. And, and I don't want you to waste all of your time on Netflix. I don't want you to waste all of your time on Amazon Prime and, and Hulu and on the NFL and on college football. I don't, waste all, I don't want you to waste all of your time. I want you to make the best use of your time. And the best use of your time, listen to me, is to surrender your life to the sovereign will of God in this life. And if we can do that, the decree has already been pronounced. The decree has already been pronounced in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The decree has already gone forth. And God says, God says, if you can use the time that I have given you wisely, paradise is for you too. It is for you too, church. And it is, when, when I think about it, as I get a little bit older, and I think about, you know, when, when we look back over our life, we realize how quickly the seasons go. Yes, we realize how quickly the seasons go, and, and if we're not careful, we, we will forget that that we were, that our time down here is to be spent preparing for an eternal season. For an eternal season, are you with me, church? Now, now I have I'm, I'm done, but I want I want to say this. I want to, I think believe that God is telling me this, to say to say this that 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 we've got to use the seasons aright. That that we've got that we've got to take full advantage. Of the seasons that God has given us by grace. Are you with me, church? Use the use use the best. My God, he, He's given. I, I hope you heard me that that He's given us the. He created time first. He loved us so much that He gave us what He created first. Time. The the, the Bible says that He breathed into to, to Adam and, and into his nostrils, and He became a, a living being that we were created in His image. And in his likeness, we were crowned with, with glory and honor. And God says, God says to somebody today, just use it wisely. Use it wisely in Christ. Just you use it wisely. You use it wisely. And so, so my, my, my friends, listen to me. I, I know that it's not fashionable. We're not really supposed to talk about, uh, about heaven. We're not supposed to talk about, about the afterlife. We're not supposed to talk about what we do because, because the, world, the world wants us to think that, that the best thing that we can do is get the most that we can get in the time that we have here. And it is the, it is the greatest deception going. Are you with me, church? The best thing that we can do in the time that God has allotted us is to prepare for eternity. Is to prepare for eternity. And that's, that's what I'm going to do. That, that's what I'm going to do. And I know that that's what you're going to do as well. And I, I, want, to, I want to end here. I want to end here uh, uh, with this. With this. That, that the, apostle, the apostle Paul says in Romans 8 and 18. He says, he says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present, what? 
time are not worth comparing with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Are you with me, church? The sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed in us. And so, so when we place our times and our spirits in the master's hands, the glory that will be revealed in us, not only in the life to come, but in this life, is beyond what we could ever imagine. The prayer line today is for those who want to affirm or perhaps reaffirm that your times are in God's hands. Are you with me, church? In addition to your times, you're willing to commit your spirit to God who has already given you the gift of time and the promise of eternity through his son, Jesus. God, for God's part, has already spoken decrees of love and forgiveness over your life. If you want to if you want to make this affirmation, I'm going to make it. I'm going to reaffirm today. Right now, that I'm going to reaffirm that my times are in God's hands and that my spirit is committed to God as well. If you want to make that statement as well, why don't you stand to your feet and we'll make this affirmation together as God's people. We'll make this affirmation together as God's people in Christ's name. Every head bowed, every eye closed in Christ's name. Oh, Lord, we thank you for, for the gift of time. We thank you, God, for the seasons that you have already granted unto us. It did not have to be so, but we're here today, God. We've we've come through pandemic. We've come through seasons of difficulty and struggle. We've come through uh, hard seasons, hardships and peril and sword, God. But but we're here today, and God, for that we say thank you for the gift of time. And God, we realize that, that, that even as you have given us time, God, we've got to use that time wisely. And and you want us, God, to to prepare not only for next week and not only for the job that we have to go to on this week, God, but you want us to prepare for eternity. You've placed eternity in every human heart. And God, for that we say thanks. We thank you, God, that when this life ends, it's not really over, God. It's just beginning. And so, God, so as as we are here today, we are are reaffirming in our spirits, God, that, that that our times are in your hands. Our, our, our seasons are in your hands. And we're just asking, even as we, we have been engraved on the palms of your hands, and even as we have been engraved on the palms of your hands, God, we just ask that as we, as we go in and out of seasons of this life, that you would protect us. And even, God, that we would realize the degree to which your decrees hold in difficult seasons, that your decrees are true in every season of life. And, God, we pray that you would bring it back to our remembrance, what you have already spoken over our lives, so that the season does not overwhelm us, God, but that we would stand on your holy promises. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this reaffirmation. And as we prepare, God, for eternity, we just ask, oh, God, that we would have a witness to someone else who's dying. Someone else who has been condemned to die. God, we just ask that you would embolden us, embolden us with the witness, even as you did with the thief on the cross, God. That you would embolden us with the witness about the love of Jesus Christ, who came and gave his life so that we could live uh, and have eternal life in Christ's name. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. Let every heart say amen. 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 Amen.